Hey, Adam. What's up? You ever get lost? All the time. Well, once I was lost, but now I'm found. Mm. I'm Adam Menes. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. And uh, today's episode is sponsored by the Oxford American. The Oxford American is a magazine dedicated to documenting the complexity and vitality of the American South. Its award-winning annual music issue comes with a CD sampler and digital download. It's a must-have for any serious music fan. Recent issues have featured Nina Simone, Thelonious Monk, John Cage, and John Coltrane. Visit OxfordAmerican.org slash YHI today. You know what? I love, as you know, uh, the Oxford American. One of the things I mentioned last week that I love about it is the advertisements in it. And I was just looking. What, what's so great about it is thing, you know, entities like Georgia and Louisiana, New Orleans will do ads like for tourism. Yeah. And it's usually like Southern Heritage and not the bad kind of Southern Heritage. Let's be clear about that. Like, about, <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Wah. no, about like music. Like Georgia has this. Um, uh, Georgia on my mind it's kind of for the state of Georgia but it's yeah. a great painting of Ray Charles at a grand piano Amazing. and a quote from him music is powerful as people listen to it they can be affected they respond Ray Charles yeah for, it just talks about his connection with the state you know we love the Oxford American and, and just in general for our European listeners if you're planning a trip to the states do not mm. sleep on the American South oh exactly it's probably the most culturally fertile and still culturally intact regions of our country yeah and I mean in terms of like you know historical things and it, start, it just doesn't start, but a, a good place to start is right here in St. Louis, about a mile from here, the Scott Joplin House. That's right. Um, in terms of, you know, historical and uh, uh, physical places to see and to walk on Beale Street in Memphis. Well, that's a little corny, actually. Uh, but it's still Beale no, Street in Memphis. Killing, there's killing just things in Memphis. Recently. Yeah, if you're coming um, from, if you're a tourist in the United States from Europe or Asia or Africa or anywhere. Yeah. Hit, hit some what of about this. Antarctica? No. No. <laughs> it's too, too hot for you. All right. What are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about how to not get lost in a drum solo. And we were just saying, did, have we done this episode? Well, <laughs> we just did an episode. This is a question from an email. So maybe they didn't catch our episode from a couple weeks ago, uh, how to avoid getting lost. We, but that wasn't drum specific. <laughs> and this is a fairly specific question. Maybe we should do an episode, how to not get lost in the You'll Hear podcast episodes. <laughs> yeah. That's tomorrow. So are we listening to this or are, we, are you going to no, spit no, it out? No, no, this isn't a speak pipe. This, this was from an, an, okay. from an email. Okay. Uh, this is from Alan. Alan asks, or writes, I often find myself getting lost in the form during an extended drum solo and don't really know when to come back into a section of a tune or the head. It can get quite embarrassing in the bandstand. Thank you for your honesty. It is hard to keep up, especially if the drummer is doing something very rhythmically complex. I have trouble hearing if a drummer is keeping the form or going free when he or she gets into very complex patterns and polyrhythmic ideas. Would like to know, how do you learn to hear drum solos better? And, am I lo and I am looking forward to your advice. Thank you, Alan. I've got the answer. Number one, listen. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> And that's it, really. That's it. But he, Alan, is already hitting on a couple of things that I think could get into a territory of being the drummer's fault is, I mean, I appreciate Alan is very humble in terms of being, you know, talking about being embarrassed on the bandstand and don't know when to come in, yep. but it's really a, a uh, two way street, as we would say, right. Yeah. Between the drummer and everybody else who's not playing. And, and some of this stuff could probably hold true for any solo that in which everybody drops out. I don't know why that always happens with the drums. I actually like, doing things like when the bass player continues and even bass and piano, the whole rhythm section or guitar during a drum solo. I think there's some interesting things, but Definitely. inevitably you're going to have a drum solo where nobody else is playing besides the drummer. Right. And I think it's, that's the, where the two way street it's up to the drummer, obviously to be creative, to do his thing and for us to listen and know where we are in the form. But if, if it's getting to the point where you don't know if they're going free or not, I think the drummer's dropping their end of the bargain a little bit. I totally, totally agree. Well, of course I, you do, because you're a pianist. Like well, me. yeah, yeah, but I don't know any great drummer who actually doesn't make it incredibly clear where the form is. Do you know what I mean? Even right. in the solo, I feel like the great ones really understand that that's part of the solo, not to confuse the entire band. Not that it, it's confusing. And sometimes, listen, even when they're keeping it basic, you have to pay attention and, and it, you have to have some responsibility to keep the time. Yeah. Um, but if they do go free, uh, all the drummers that I play with at least are very clear about 
now we're, I'm coming back in. You know. Now I think you made you hit on something very important. You said you don't know any. Uh, if, if I heard you correctly, you don't know any great drummer that doesn't make it very clear where the, where they are in the form. Right now, what's important, I think, to um, to unpack, yeah. as as we would say, yeah, yeah. is that you didn't say make it very obvious no it doesn't have to be obvious in fact many great drummers i would say don't make it obvious unless there's a musical reason for it so what we want to get into and look we're making a big assumption that you're playing with a good or great kind of a or not not to rate drummers a b c d e f but let's go ahead why not yeah a or b kind of drummer that um there you want to get to that point where you can kind of feel where they're feeling the time and not necessarily marking it in an, in an obvious way, mm -hmm. but in a clear way. Yeah. Like, so you have to get into their style, and you also have to be confident yourself in terms of that you're feeling the time and the form in the same way they are, even if they're not making it obvious at a certain point. I think that's very important. So I think we have some ideas maybe for some practical strategies. If I'm not, if I'm reading you right, am I reading you right? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, I, I'll start with this. Read me like a book. <laughs> <laughs> start with what to what you just said about yeah. understanding how they're feeling the time. Like like the first one is listen to the drummers that you play with and get to know their tendencies. Yes. Because some drummers, you know, hopefully everybody has perfect time all the time, but that's not the case. No, uh, a lot of drummers that I've played with tend to pick it up a little bit during the drum solo. Yeah. Time leans forward a little bit. Yep. Uh, and so I can recognize that. Some lean back. And if I know that that's the case, then I know that, okay, I'm not ahead of them. They're just pulling back a little bit. I need to stay with them. I mark this by... Uh, and I don't know what you do, but I tap my foot quite a bit during drum solos when mm -hmm. it's just the drummer or even training fours. You know, yeah. I'm I'm more than I would during my solo. I'm trying to hear where they are yep. by tapping my foot, yep. trying to keep the pulse with them. Um, that's my first one. The second one that I find was a game changer for me early on was learning to listen to the bass drum. Mm. It's the last thing I think we hear in, in the jazz, uh, in, in a jazz drum. Yeah scenario right because the cymbals and the snare are so prevalent um but listen to the bass drum and the hi-hat to try to find where the beat is because oftentimes they'll mark that form or right. the time or the phrase with the bass drum right and it's not always going to be like on one or no. the and of four or whatever but there will usually be some kind of um a pattern or sort of discernible pattern that uh, that most drummers will do that's a big part of their style how they treat the bass drum I would say. yeah if they're doing polyrhythms and i mean you know they're probably including the bass drum a little bit but mm -hmm. uh it's the least likely to get way out right like yep. to me it's the most likely to be uh on 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 form yeah so you know one thing that i i like like to do um especially if i don't know the drummer that well or if i maybe kind of know what they sound like but haven't played with them a lot mm -hmm. um I, th I think when you're in a situation where you really know the drummer, you're playing a lot, I find I don't even have to think about it. Like, I just come in. I, I mean, I can almost, I'm not necessarily zone out, but but kind of just get so much into enjoying what they're playing yeah. and then sort of come in on instinct and it sort of works. But that's that's sort of rare because you have to be playing with someone like kind of all the time to feel like that. That's that's but, a level of relationship that, yeah, you yeah. have to be very comfortable. But if it's somebody good and you know that they're not like going into free or, or doing some unclear things... Um, what I would do is, first of all, try to hopefully know the form so well by y yourself because you it shouldn't be the drummer's responsibility to th their responsibility during the solo is just like any solo is to, is to make a tell a great story from the beginning of solo to the end. It's not yeah. to make the form clear and and to mark it unless that's part of their story yeah, yeah. to the other players. You know, their thing is to do that. So I think that you can think about two different ways on the form. You can think about the melody where you're actually hearing the melody go by and it kind of depends on the type of tune. Something like, um, you know, A Night in Tunisia where the form, the, the melody really denotes the form in a very clear way. There's a re repetition of sections but then the bridge is so different in terms of the melody that you can just sort of sing in your head yep. the melody as the drummer is soloing. And that's another thing. You should be tapping your foot, sing the melody. That'll help you keep the form so you know right. whether you're on the first A, the second A, the bridge. Now we might just note as you're tapping your foot, like you might not want to tap it loud and sing on mic during mm -hmm. the actual drum solo. That's mm -hmm. going to be a little much. This is more internal and like yeah. light tapping, right? But don't you think though too that most of the drummers that you play with, if they're playing a solo overnight in Tunisia, they're likely going to kind of land somewhere near at the yeah. end of their phrase, right? They're going to give you some kind of, not, it's not a clue, they're just good musicians, so they're making musical phrases right. that are not obvious, as you say, but like make sense. And so like no one's going to go over a polyrhythmic thing and then like halfway through that polyrhythm expect 
everybody to jump in right on one. I mean, you should ideally, yeah. but like that's kind of a, a jerk move, I think. I think so too. But the same thing if they're playing totally free yeah. and just be like, gah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, what what is that? Yeah. Like, gotta, you got to make it clear if you've been free. And if you're playing a lot of over the bar stuff, I mean, you don't have to button up every solo or every phrase, but um, it makes musical sense. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, the other part of that, or the other way that I've, I find as opposed to listening to the melody too is say for a tune like A Night in Tunisia, this could work where you're listening to the harmonic form go by, kind of singing that along where you're thinking about the chord changes, almost like the bass line, the root note, something kind of what the chords are as you're going through, not thinking about the melody, yeah. but thinking about the form. So again, this sort of relies on you really knowing the form to be able to hear it without playing it. But even if you need to kind of think about what does it feel like playing those chords, you're still in time, maybe you're tapping your foot as well, but you're using, basically you're having some kind of guidepost, some sort of guardrails yeah. to just, as opposed to just listening to the solos. Now, if you know the drummer, like we talked about before, so well, and you know that they're going to bring you in and then you can kind of feel your way through the form. That's what I love to do. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of top level if everything is lined up perfectly. But many times I'll sort of just sort of try to hear the form. And when I say hear the form is just really hear the changes in yeah, my yeah. mind as much as I can. Not necessarily think about what I would solo. Still trying to, yeah. like you do want to listen to the drum solo because there's things that you can use maybe later in the in the arrangement or whatever. But uh, I didn't mean to be like, you should still listen to the drum solo. You should be listening to it all the no, time. No, and you know what? It actually doesn't hurt to throw in some landmarks actually yep. play you know the top of some a's the top of the bridge or yeah. something to you know dun dun yeah give Ooh, the drummer that can be a little annoying though well not every time but yeah, like you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying like if you're having a if you're really struggling with it that could be calling out the drummer like do you know where you're at because i do yeah yeah, yeah yeah i mean yeah but but you can do that in your mind that's kind of what i'm saying is like even if it's not appropriate there would be times when it's appropriate to play yeah, yeah. It. that's what i'm but saying even sometimes if, it's appropriate to even just like mark it a little bit absolutely yeah. i mean i do that a lot you do that and there's many appropriate times but even if it's a, a kind of thing where that's not needed you can do that and i do that in my mind i'm kind of like bam and then you're hearing it what that does is that links up uh, I mean, a great drummer is going to be hearing the form as well. Like yeah, we always yeah. think, oh, it's just a rhythmic thing. Not at all. Like they're hearing the form. They're hearing the chord changes. And it gets into a little bit of a, a murky area, exactly how that's manifested. But they do hear that. I mean, I know that. And so that links you up closer to what they're doing as well, uh, structurally. One, one more piece of advice, Alan, is is to get better at hearing them. I would recommend listening to them and, in fact, transcribing a drum solo, maybe mm -hmm. by Max Roach or by someone who's pretty clear with language and form, yeah. even just to be able to sing it, you know, a dun, dun, ga, ga, do, do, to be able to mimic that yeah. sound with your mouth or even take it to the piano somehow, the rhythms, um, that can be very, very good. I wouldn't write it out, but I'm saying be able to like know that, that drum solo so yeah. well that you can sing it back. Um, that would go a long way in helping you understand what the drummer is hearing. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I remember, I'm just remembering something that I did years ago, I think that worked pretty well, I'd recommend in terms of ways to practice this would be to take a solo, especially when you're talking about with, uh, having trouble hearing if a drummer is keeping the form or going free, yeah. or when he or she gets into very complex patterns and poly polyrhythmic ideas. So if it's kind of a straight ahead swinging thing, especially if it's a little bit faster or something, take a solo. Is this your swinging neck? Yes, my swing kind neck. kind of moving What's your up? neck back and yeah, forth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you would take a solo and especially one well you could do it if you kind of know it or even if you don't know it that well on a recording and play along with the drum solo and you might start with don't solo whatever um start with just walking a bass line great if, advice. If, it's, if it's like straight four this is why you're the best great you advice. know what i'm saying like you walk with that and then <laughs> what, what's happening is you're starting to hear that what the actual foundation of the groove is that's not there with the bass player normally yeah, yeah. while those polyrhythmic ideas are going on. Then you could take it to just comping behind. Now, the only thing with that is the more you hear the solo, the more you kind of learn it. So it doesn't help you in real time where the solo is going to be something, you know, that you don't know. So you might want to jump around to different drum solos on recordings that maybe you don't know that well, but that can work well. Bass line and then comping. And then, you know, Alan, if you do get lost, uh, just practice blaming it on the drummer uh, you know, giving him a weird look in front of the audience. That's always good. Yeah. Pr practice going, you know, coming in on the wrong place and then going, whoa, oh, right, right, right. that sure. works. Well, and then, but, but you know what? A lot of times when I'm coming back in, I'm not even, if I'm not that sure, there's some ways. To, first of all, don't charge in on one. We don't have to play on one. Play. The bass player I mean, has to play on one. We're assuming that Alan's a pianist. Yeah. You know? But I mean, really, like, <laughs> or in any case, you don't have to come. You can be like, well, Bam, like oh. once you really hear it. Now I do that with Greg Hutchinson a lot. Like Greg is now you talk about always playing the form. He always oh, yeah. does, but he gets into so much complex stuff. But I trust him so much with the form that I don't worry about 
I definitely don't worry about coming right in on one because sometimes it doesn't fit what he's going to play anyway. Yeah. But I know that it's going to be established. So I just wait to musically, wherever I come in, and even if I don't quite line up until two bars later, it doesn't matter. Totally. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they'll let you know. They'll yeah, let you know. Exactly. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Alan. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, for the question. Like Even though we just did something similar, I think we nailed this, buddy. Uh, we, you know what? Yeah. We can repeat ourselves with the best of them. Uh, uh, then a reminder, too, for a limited time, uh, you'll hear it. Listeners can subscribe to the Oxford American for only $25. Visit OxfordAmerican.org forward slash YHI. To did you say $25? Today. Because I'm looking bucks. at this, the Southern Music issue, which is the current winter 2018, and the... Um, Retail price on this. I don't know. If, do you ever buy magazines at the airport? I'm I do. big into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what you're gonna pay at the airport. Sixteen ninety five, my friend. That's for one issue. Not, a, not our. You'll hear it, listeners. Though. You'll hear it, listeners. Will go. Um, I mean, if you're really anxious, you can pick it up at the airport. Speaking too. of listeners, we have a, another listener tune to yes. end the show today. This, this is, has been fun. This has been really fun. If you have a tune that you'd like to hear at the end of a You'll Hear It episode, just send it to Andrew. If it's at, good. If it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send it you're to Andrew at OpenStudioNetwork.com. Uh, today's tune is The Great Escape. I love that title. This is by uh, Stefan Sirbu. Stefan Sirbu, that's a cool name. Yep. Uh, thank you, Stefan, for submitting this. Until next time, you'll hear it. Bye.